Well, all all right. right. Welcome back to As It Should Be. Paul Berlino here in the world famous As It Should Be Studios. Crystal Durant. Hey, what In the up? world famous As It Should Be Studios. That's right. Tommy Von Voigt in the world famous As It Should Be Studios. Yeah. So we have something in common. What's We're that? We're all in the world famous As It Should Be Studios. Yay. Yeah. See how oh. that works? Yeah. <laughs> see how that works. Yeah. <laughs> this is the all right. magic. We also have something else in common. We all have our lists for our favorite albums of 1997 Woo! and we are going to give them to you 1997 to you, to you. <laughs> and uh i think uh, tommy yeah tommy begins wow tommy starts it and he has <laughs> it's mm. better than going last isn't it <laughs> wow <laughs> oh, so this is the note on which we are going to be starting this episode <laughs> all of tommy's passion are just... you surprised it's 1997, man. Oh. How much more music could you possibly be embarrassed about liking back then? <laughs> I think it's only just beginning, isn't it? Because, I mean, you do, you only just yeah. got into this shit. Because now, so in 1997 <laughs> is when I officially went off the deep end into punk and right. ska and all this nonsense. So you sort of retroactively got into the albums you've already discussed. Exactly. But yeah. this this is now when it's active, it's current. Yeah. <laughs> this is when I'm going out and buying new releases. Yeah. Okay. 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 So and as such Hit it. Of my top ten, nine of them fall into the category <laughs> Uh, I can't stand behind these anymore, but this is what I was listening to in the late '90s. So, and really, technically, you only have one top one top album of the year. Yes, one. Technically speaking, I have one top album. Well, I mean, I guess that one. I you know one what I'm saying? Album, one. Yeah. Like, it would be a one album list uh-huh. if he didn't go this route. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And yeah. on top of that, I also have a shameful <coughs> mention. Oh, I have a shameful mention. Bring it for 1997. My shameful mention is Bio de los Locos. By Voodoo Glow Skulls. Oh, the fucking Voodoo Glow Skulls. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Oh, the fucking Voodoo Glow Skulls. The Voodoo Glow Skulls. Skulls. Is that band from L.A. or something? Of course they were from L.A. <laughs> Kidding. Yeah, yeah. Kidding. Yeah. Kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Okay, so let's just get down to it. <laughs> Come on. Number no, uh, number 10. Number 10, I have The Dwarves Are Young and Good Looking by The Dwarves. Oh, Black. Black Dahlia. Black Dahlia. Oh. Yeah. When I, when I was in Persephone's Bees, uh, yeah, he was a, he's, a, he's a friend of Angelina's. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a guy named Black Dahlia? It's a guy named Black. <clears throat> I have no idea what his name, his name actually is. Is he a black guy? No. Oh. Right. He's like a big white guy, kind of like a 90s version of Mel Sharples. Wow. Okay. I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, 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 forget it. All right. My number nine. <laughs> AFI with Shut Your Mouth and Open Your Eyes. <laughs> I remember that album title. AFI. AFI. Yeah, AFI. I was really into AFI in the late 90s. really was. My number eight. No effects. So long and thanks for all the shoes. <laughs> what? It's a play on a Douglas <laughs> Adams book. It's the fourth in the Hitchhiker's Guide trilogy. Oh. So long and thanks for all the fish, which is what the yeah. dolphins say to Earth after they leave the planet because they know it's going to get blown up. Oh. And um, I only so read they, the first one. They called it So Long and Thanks for All the Shoes, which is a reference to people losing their shoes in the pit at their, oh. their punk rock <laughs> shows. I get it. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> My number seven, the self-titled debut by the Donnas. Okay. Okay. All right. I was into the Donnas, man. I, I yeah, was into that the Donnas. Was, yeah, yeah. I liked it. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Donnas coming up. The Donnas, they, they, there's something special about the Donnas. No, that, that's that's good stuff. Yeah. Um, they were still finding their way on this record, but uh, yeah, I was really into this shit. My number six. Oh, there's going to be some blank stares here. But let's see how deep any of our watchers are when it comes to uh, when it comes to the punk scene. Unmerry Melodies by Big Wig. I've heard the name. That's all I know. That's about all I'm that's, expecting from you. That's as far as you. I go with that. That's yeah. all chirp, I'm chirp. expecting from you. Chirp, chirp. My number five. Me first in the Gimme Gimme's oh, with Have a Ball. Oh. <laughs> that just reminds me of this really great drag so queen called Mimi I'm First. Mimi I'm First. That's a pretty I'm cute name. Race, yeah. <clears throat> oh. My number, 
My number four. This is a painful yeah. journey. Yeah, hurts. Isn't it? This hurts. <laughs> You've heard of peaceful journey. Well, this is painful journey. Painful journey. Yes. Yeah. All right. Instead of instead of being like this on the album cover, I'm just yes. like uh, <laughs> right. Ah, uh, number four, the Travoltas with Baja California. The Travoltas. I got nothing. That it doesn't get any more '90s than that. Bro, well, I you ended know, like up naming, naming. You know, I mean, I ended up on a record label with that band at one point, and I was already <laughs> a fan of theirs, and then I ended up on the same label as them. We played the Warp Tour together. That shit was a that shit was a trip. Hmm. And it's funny. It's kind of like you probably were just like holy shit at the time, and now you're just like, eh. it was. <laughs> it was like it was like making friends with some of my musical heroes. Yeah, it was really awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Okay, my number three self titled debut by the Teen Idols. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that at all. Yeah, they were. They were just. Just no, so this is beyond Ramones core. This is just fast pop punk. I love the Teen Idols. They were from Tennessee. Um, played a show with them actually on at least one occasion, and on another occasion we either played the second time with them or we were just it was between <clears throat> dates on our tour and we were just there as guests. But I was there watching them actually implode as their career came to an end on stage. Oh, live as it happened, like a fight, like it was bad. Like, oh, it was shit. real bad. Like, uh, I think it was the singer was really, really drunk, and the guitar player was really, really drunk. And there was a lot of really nasty infighting within their, their camp at that point in time. And between the songs, like, the singer is supposed to be doing his crowd banter, but he's just, like, insulting the rest of the guys in the band. And and Ooh. then, and then like, the, the bass player, Heather, I think her name was, at one point between songs, she's just like, she's on fucking drugs. She's on drugs right now. And she just looked at him like she wanted to just actually fucking commit homicide in front of all these witnesses. Wow. The guitar player stumbles <laughs> backwards into the drum set. And then after that show, there was no more teen idols. <laughs> they just met <magically. laughs> So I got to actually be there as one of my favorite bands at the time, just disintegrated <laughs> right in front of me. And I can't remember if we opened that show, if we were just there as guests, but yeah, I was there for that. Hmm. Um, my, number, my number two, the Aquabats with the fury of the Aquabats. Oh, the Aquabats. Uh, the Aquabats back. back again. And that concludes this round of I Can't Stand Behind These, blah, blah, blah. But my number one for 1997. <laughs> An album you would have assumed would have been in this pile, but I had to have something. <clears throat> and that is American Psycho by The Misfits, which was their oh. comeback album with their new, their new singer, Michael Graves, who turned out to be an unbelievable piece of shit. But it's a very fun album. It was a surprisingly good album especially considering their main creative force was long since gone. Mm. That being Glenn Danzig, of course. Right. And this was after Danzig and Jerry sued each other into oblivion, and, and, yeah. and Jerry won the actual rights to continue performing with the name of the Misfits, and there's all sorts of bullshit. So, you know, they got Doyle back on guitar, they got this dude they knew on drums, and they got this 18, 19-year-old dude, Michael Graves, to be their singer, and he ended up becoming, like... He outed himself as being like you know Trumpy. And I was all gonna that say, kind of I'm shit. guessing. Yeah, he's yeah. he's he's a pile of shit. Yeah. But this album they put out is a really cool record. So um, yeah, that's the thing about that whole hardcore scene is that it's kind of a breeding ground for guys like that. You know, it, it surprises me that it is, but for some reason it is. I don't know yeah. why that is. I think it's just because. Why it's does so, this? Hoo, 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 I don't yeah. know. Maybe maybe certain personality types gravitate towards certain scenes but I guess if you're talking about <clears throat> white guys filled with angst who want to be tribal I mean right. what the fuck I guess. like shaving their heads I don't know I, but yeah <laughs> Michael know. Graves apparently is just a piece of shit they don't work with him anymore they haven't in years but uh, but yeah American Cycle of the Misfits I'm kind of surprised like why why would you be embarrassed by the Donnas that was a good record because I'm just not into them anymore oh, I'm just okay. not especially the early material where they were really really trying to find their footing they yeah. were they were pretty pretty ramshackle they were, I mean they were like fresh out of high school like yeah. if even like it was kind of it was kind of borderline noise Kind of, but kind of, I, I but, was it, but there's something charming about it. I mean, they very quickly got their shit together, and I, I will stand by. I think Donna C, the drummer, fucking monster. And uh, Donna R, the guitarist, nailing that oh, ace. Oh, she's, she, she's, she's actually nails like that ace easily really the best before he lost band. his shit. Yeah. She nails his shit. Yeah. Yeah. I always felt like the singer was a bit weak. 
I would agree. Um, I think she made the most of what she had <clears throat> to work with, but yeah. and the bassist was the coolest. I think she's the coolest in the band by far. Not the best musician, but she's definitely the coolest one. I, she, I remember reading a few interviews with her where it seems like she really knew her shit. Like yeah. she's always like name checking like glam bands and shit. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah. yeah. So, <coughs> all right. <clears throat> well, we'll be right back. Okay, so um, some little fun facts from 1997. Mm. Um, I went it to sucked. see. I, <laughs> hey uh, I went to see David Bowie's 50th birthday show at Madison Square Garden, and boy was I not happy. Oh. You know why I wasn't happy? Why? Do you know who played with him in that show? I'll tell you who played with him in that show. Ted Nugent. No, <laughs> Ted Nugent. <laughs> the the dude, the replacement <clears throat> dude from the Misfits. Oh, no. Michael Graves. <laughs> uh, no, there was Eric Carmen. No, this okay. Corral in blackface. No, I'm kidding. Oh no, oh. <laughs> no. He had Robert Smith, which yeah. I love. Robert Smith. Eh, fine. The Foo Fighters. Lou Reed. That was all right. Mm. Sonic Youth. Oh, losing me there. Frank Black. Billy Corgan. Ugh. And Placebo opened for the whole show. This sounds like this was a corral. Yeah. yeah. Placebo. Placebo. Yeah. Like what? Uh, so, so Bowie. So Bowie's kind of doing the trying to be current thing. Even yeah. if he wasn't he doing it necessarily with his own music, that's his sort of way of. Well, he had them like they played his. You know, like they were backing him and oh, that was, his, oh, this band. was his band. That was his band. Oh, I not, see. Like not the band, but like they did one or two of their own songs and then blah blah blah. Right, kind of like, like how when Billy Idol comes out with yeah, the new when they do Tommy. Yeah, it was like eight hundred hours yeah. long. I was, I was, I wanted to see him and a killer band play his shit. I didn't want to see the rest of these clowns. Right, right, right. I love you, Robert Smith, but I didn't want to see you in that show. <laughs> yeah. um, the Spice Girls wanna be. That's it. Uh, the notorious B.I.G. was murdered. Winter Marsalis was the first jazz artist to win the Pulitzer Prize. Mmm, bop! <laughs> uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's first induction ceremony in Cleveland, instead of being here at the Waldorf Astoria. The first Ozfest. Did you know that? The first Ozfest. The Ozfest. As if he has anything to do with that. <laughs> the first Sharon Fest. Yeah, yeah basically, really. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Sting and the police became zillionaires because of... I'll be missing you. Um, the tribute song didn't kind of just Sting make the most money off of that, and maybe not so much Andy Summers. Well, I don't or know Stuart what the publishing Copeland. was, but I feel like there might have been some sour grapes. I, mean, I, oh, I should yeah, look into well, that. On. Well, Entering into any deal with Sting, Sting boom, but, that's what you're going to get. I mean, they had to make <laughs> yeah. some money from it. I'm sure they made some, but I feel like the, I remember reading. I don't yeah. mean to derail you, but I remember yeah. reading that I think. Andy Summers, there, there might be some bitterness there because, you know, it's his riff. Yeah. And, like, I think Sting got the lion's share of the publishing. Oh, well, probably from did. I yeah. mean, he probably did throughout their yeah. career, but whatever. Um, Fela died from AIDS related complications. Hmm. Uh, Princess Diana's funeral, The Candle in the Wind was rewritten for that. Everybody remembers that. Watched it on TV. Uh, Mariah Carey got divorced and Butterfly came out. Yeah. Tommy. Yeah. She loses <gasps> me after that. What? Yeah. What was, do you mean? I was there for the record with Fantasy. What was it? Uh, Daydream. Yeah. Yeah. After that, nah, I'm not. I'm not with it anymore. What? I get off. I get off the Mariah train at, at that point. Yeah. What? Yeah. 
Hmm. And uh, Michael Hutchins died. <clears throat> and we all know how he died. That was really weird. I have no runners up. And no so, runners up? No, zero. <laughs> so here's my list. Coming in at number 10, I have Show World by Red Cross. Yeah. That's your number 10, eh? There it is. Well, hell, why don't we do this then? Why don't we do this? That's my number 10. Is Show Red World Cross. by Red Cross. All right. I love that record. <sighs> Coming in at number nine, I got My Way by Usher. Ah. Which was a big record for him. That was like, where he came on the scene and was dancing his ass off and looking cute. And everybody loved that record. Everybody who liked hip hop R R&B stuff loved it. Did you ever listen to that? No? No. Nope. Okay. Missed me completely. All right. Coming in at number eight, I got Supa Dupa Fly by Missy Misdemeanor Elliot. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, Supa Dupa Fly. Holy shit. I mean, I can't stand the rain. It was on MTV. It was on VH1. It was everywhere all the time. Blasting out of cars. You heard it in the mall, at the gas stations. Everybody knows that song. I guess I didn't go to grocery stores or gas stations or... During the entire decade. Are you serious? No. I don't. I just... Maybe if you played the song, I'd be like, oh, that one. But she sings as it stands, I don't have any idea I what the song I can't stand it. Doon, tuk, doon, doon, bop, bop. All right, never mind. <clears throat> then for number seven, I have Share My World by Mary J. Blige. Now, this is when she was on a little bit of an uptick in her romantic life. So it was like 50 mm, 50 melancholy. But the songs are great. She's, no matter how happy she is, she still has. She to still get has the, some kind of something yeah. sad going on. I hope you're in really. I, you should have an analyst, Mary J. Blige. Forget oh, about. Oh no. It. You really should. I hope she does. All right, number six. We got "Life After Death" by the Notorious B.I.G. Nothing. I, I've, I said before. I think this album is a mess. It's just it too uneven. Is. It's just too uneven. It was for me. slapped together. Yes. But. I'm not sure that you there's stuff on there that you yeah, really like, but yeah. I think a lot of it is messy. Yeah, I agree with you, but I still well, also I think if if we're at this point where basically if it wasn't on his list, he's probably not here for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. If you th if you look at what he had to resort to to make I a mean, list, right. <laughs> for real, dude, you get it, you get I just, it. I still had to ask though because you never know. With you, you never know. Sometimes you never know. Maybe like maybe you didn't think of it or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Well, uh, no, he's too thorough for that. All right, coming in at number five, I have OK Computer by Radiohead. Ah. This was a huge record for them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it ruled that year. It ruled that year. And when it came out, I did not like it. I was not into them. Everybody, once again, you didn't listen to this? Oh, my God, bless. So that made me hate it even more, even though I hadn't listened to it. So I listened to it. Uh, maybe a year and a half, two years later, and I thought, oh, okay, I get it. I like it. But what I like even better is the Easy Star All Star <laughs> cover of this album called Radio Dread. Oh, yes. I can't stop talking about it because it's great. That's on my list of what I listen to once a week. And then at number four, I have Dig Your Own Hole by the Chemical Brothers. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. This is, see, all that agony that Tommy went through? This is what I'm dealing with right now. Like, I had one or two songs on there that I really, really <laughs> liked, but this was, you know, the beginning of uh, what the kids call now EDM. Oh, yeah, that's not a good thing. You know, no, which is yeah, not a great nothing thing. Nothing good came of that. No. But I... There we go. They had some, you know, rock, stock, and beats, or whatever that song was. Yeah. Oh, God. I forgot about that. Yeah, oh, jeez. Yeah. Give me some of them rock, rock, blah, blah, beats. Oh, that was them? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God, that shit was fucking horrible. Anyway. It's all right. <laughs> cock, I, was, I thought he said, here's some cock, rock, cock blocking beats. Cock blocking beats. <laughs> block beats. Cock blocking beats. Rump or cock rocking beats. beats. I don't know what it is. You tell us in the comments. You know what it is. Coming in at number three, I have The Velvet Rope by Janet Jackson. And the reason why this record is really great is because this was like her big, bigger sexual awakening record, bigger than, more dirtier than Janet. <laughs> and that, wow. She's can't, had, wait, can't wait for the next record. She's had so many sexual awakenings. Yeah, it's like yeah. she's... <laughs> well, I mean, you know, like I said before, so, you know, control, she took control of her career. She had Jimmy and Terry doing everything, which is great. And then, you know, there was Janet, where it was, 
you know, it was a good record and it was a little cheeky, but this shit, I mean, she's like having phone sex and the velvet rope is about getting tied up. I mean, it's dirty. It's a dirty bird, but I'm here for it. And the tour was good too. Coming in at number two, I have Homogenic by Bjork. Another great Bjork record. Every song on it is awesome. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, this is this is this will be this is for uh, this is to be answered later or to be seen later. Be but seen later. I am interested to know if uh, the Dancer in the Dark soundtrack makes her list. We'll find out. You'll find out. Uh, but my number one record of this particular year. What is it? 96? 97. 97. 97. My number one record of 1997 <laughs> is... <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Okay. <laughs> oh, fuck. I can't wait to watch this. Uh, it's, it's Baduism by Erica Badu. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, uh, that was a huge album. You couldn't escape it. I don't even think you I escaped it. I escaped it. it I, I escaped think. it. No, you heard it, I but you didn't know it was her. It, I, you... it chased me a little bit, but I got away. I was slippery. <laughs> I, was very, slippery. I was very skinny in 1997. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, she was, uh, you know, one of the Black Lily people. And whew, that hit single, I mean, what the fuck? On and on. That was huge. And again, Neo Soul, which I hate that term, but that's mm. what it is laid back cool chill vibe and you know she's gone on to make some other really great records some not so great but again I love her chutzpah and she's another person who is like I don't care what you think about it I'm making it and either you get on the train with me or you go sit there I don't care so uh, I like it she's gutsy especially for a black woman to be able to do that come on that's huge so I like it Baduism. You know it. All these black women ran around wrapping shit around their head because of her. <laughs> it was big. Sure as hell wasn't because of Rhoda. No, it wasn't because of Rhoda. Erica. Maybe it was because of Nina Simone. Ay, maybe. 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 I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. I, like I know. All right. Anyway. All right. Well, thank you. All right, everybody, for watching. And what? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. Uh, but I do night. thank you for watching the upcoming messages we have coming up. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> it says here, the internet is the future of business. We have to be on the internet. Why? Doesn't say. Move along, Kmart's closed. Did you open up early for me? No way, no how. I got a friend that wants one of those new Garth Brooks CDs. You mean sevens, limited edition? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I love Garth Brooks. Well, would you open early for Garth Brooks? Garth? You gotta buy your own CD? Yeah, it's the rules. Like rule seven? What's that? Can't open early. Get Garth Brooks' new CD seven starting Tuesday at Kmart. If I sing, would you open early? You sing for about seven hours. Thanks a lot. Technically, I was telling Paul, there's nothing wrong with my arm. You should be able to hit my arm all day long, but my arm thinks it's hurt. Right. And my brain thinks that's where the pain is. is. Your, your brain is putting it there. Yes. It's not really there. It's not really there. It's, it's just it's yeah. really screwed up the way your nerves yeah. work. The human body is fucked. I'm oh, back! Oh, we're back! We're back. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <Jesus> <laughs> <Christ>. <laughs> <laughs> this stays in. Oh yeah, oh, that might have to. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, I think oh, I have a list. I think I have a list. You. your list. I may not have a lisp, but I do have a, a list. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all right, and I have only one oh. honorable mention for this year. Oh dear. Uh, but it is an album that I almost had on the proper list. Elliot Smith, either or. Oh, I'm not oh, big into Elliot that, Smith. Dude. I don't. Yeah. Generally, I'm not on that train. But I was yeah. going through this record, making this list, and I was like, I kind of like this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I at first I didn't understand what all the whoop hubbub was. What was the hubbub? What's the hubbub, bub? Like what? 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. But uh, anyway, on my list list, <laughs> and uh, number 10, coming in number 10, Tony Bennett on Holiday. Yeah. A tribute to Billie Holiday. So great. Yeah, what? that's a fun I love that record. Really yeah, record. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, he's working with good material, but then you have Tony Bennett, like, Come doing on. it. Come on. You know, during, during like, a really, really fertile period for him. Oh, like, yeah. He's just, like, back on top of the world. Singing you know, his ass off, yeah. On top of his game and the royal beer. Yep. Um, number nine, Blur with Blur. <laughs> blur. <laughs> this is the one with, uh, woo-hoo! Oh. Right off the that guy! Oh. The one, the one that Tommy bought and, and loved so much. Ding, 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 so ding, 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 I grooved that ding, 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 ding. You were you bummed that you couldn't put on your list, but you had to put There, there was just on wasn't there. enough room. I wanted <laughs> yeah, yeah. it on there. Emotionally, <laughs> spiritually, it's on my list. It's all there, yes. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, number eight. Self-titled, the second self-titled album by Cheap Trick. Oh, the Cheap Trick oh, yeah, '97 Cheap album. Trick, yeah. Now you, that's the tour I saw. That you 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 have to yeah you have to give it to that one. That is a good Cheap Trick album. They have a lot of spotty records or even shitty records yeah, in do. the later periods, like mid and later periods. But this is like this is a good solid new Cheap Trick album. Or and then I think that the label they put it out kind of like went under or something. Yeah, and, and distribution dried up and I, oh yeah, and it totally it totally <clears throat> killed that record. I think from, yeah, from what I understand. And they even did they did a sub pop single at the time too. It oh, was wow. like a sub pop single. It's like a couple songs that aren't even on that album. Huh. That are from that same period and like they were you know kind of lining up ready to do all the right things at the right time and then that record just like just yep. like vanished you know that sucks hmm. yeah anyway number seven Foo Fighters with the color and the shape oh. this is the last this is the second Foo Fighters album and this is the last one I bought I was talking about how I liked the first album a lot and I bought it and, and I, I even went to see them on that, that tour but after this album came out, I bought it right away because I loved the first album so much. And, you know, about half of it I really like. A bunch of it I don't. And then when the third album came out, I just was like, I was just utterly disinterested. Mm. I mean, I didn't even dislike what they were doing. I was just disinterested. Yeah. yeah. I also <laughs> feel like, in fairness, they just kept getting even more bland. They they kind of did. They're just aggressively bland. Yeah. <laughs> aggressively but, bland. Anyway, so number six, the decline and fall of the Upper Crust, the oh. second Upper Crust album. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Some of, <laughs> when we were throwing out titles earlier on the earlier episode, yeah. some of them are from that the album I talked about then, some of them are from this album. There's and a third one, isn't there? There's a third, maybe Once more into the I breaches past or something, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think this is, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, a t- I'm, I'm just the first two album. Oh, oh the first man. two Everything Upper Crust, that, yeah. Yeah. Everything after the 18th century, they're just they just lost their way. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, so uh, number five, the Muffs with "Happy Birthday to Me." Yes. Yeah, the third Muffs album. Those first three Muffs albums, yeah. But number four, Matthew Sweet with Blue Sky on Mars. Is that the Yes font? Yes, it is. Ah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. And it's, it's yeah, on Mars. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. The, well, this isn't the last. Yeah, no, I'm still buying Matthew Sweet albums for a few albums after this. But yeah, I mean, this is another one of those where there's a lot of good, there are a lot of good songs on it that I like. But I wouldn't put it up there with Girlfriend or 100% Fun. Like, you know. But it's worthy of my 1997 list because what else am I going to put on? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. But number three is an album that I don't have on vinyl, but I damn well should have it. Um, there was a reissue that came out kind of recently, and I need to buy one because this is an album that I shouldn't let. If you wait too long on new reissues of vinyl, then they like the, the prices skyrocket. Like you kind of have to yeah. get it while it's hot, and that is. Flaming Pie by Paul McCartney. Oh. Okay. Now, Flaming Pie by Paul McCartney. Yes, this is his 1997 album. It is one of his best albums. Really? Yes. I remember you telling me this a long time yes. ago. Yes. This is the first album he made or put out after the anthology. I've talked about this before. This album is basically Paul McCartney spent three years 
digging deeply into the Beatles archives and hearing those tapes day after day, week after week, he came out of that going, oh shit, okay. Uh, that's how that's how you do that. And like he came out and made this record easily one of his best albums. And that and that is widely regarded as such. Hmm. Like it's 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 a strong strong record. He like he basically he's been back and making good records ever since. But this is kind of like the high point, you know, for sure. And those, yeah, there's like I mean, I think there are there are 14 tracks on it. There are two tracks I don't like. Mm. You know, and for a later period McCartney album that's yeah, yeah, pretty damn good. Yeah. Right. But anyway, okay. So number two, you're gonna be shocked. You're gonna be stunned. Here it comes. Red Cross. Red Ross. Red Cross. Red Cross. Red Cross. <laughs> Show World. Yes, Red Cross Show World. Oh man. Red Ross. And this record. I think I mentioned before in '93 that my big, my really obsessive period with Red Cross was Face Shifter in '93, through this album. That was like my. I was obsessed with Red Cross. I mean, I had been a fan before that, but like with those two albums is where I was like 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 how Kiss fans are with Kiss. Oh yeah. I was that bad with Red Cross. Wow. And this fucking record, like we had I don't remember who the con somehow some way by my friend Red Cross friends and I, we got an early tape of an earlier version of this album. It was originally going to be an album called Sh- uh, Black Shampoo. <laughs> Black Shampoo that they they were recording it with one of the dudes from Stone Temple Pilots like the guitar player one of those guys was producing that you know, for whatever reason they decided to just abandon that version of the album and they started from scratch and redid it as Show World and we ended up getting a bootleg tape of the of the Black Shampoo of the Black Shampoo version of the album and then and that we started really listening to and getting into. And then before this album actually came out, somebody that I knew knew the drummer's roommate and got like a tape of the album. So we had like a tape of the album months and months before it came out. So when it actually came out, I was excited to get a physical copy, but I like, I knew the album back to front. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was kind of like this, Just making it I was official. excited to yeah. have it, but I didn't have that experience of putting on the, a new album on day of release and hearing it for the first time, yeah. you know, but so but it's great. easily one of their best albums. It's, it's it's a classic if you're a Red Cross fan. But um, all right, so but that leaves my number one that I have above Red Cross. By the way, uh oh. At the time, I would not have put it above Red Cross, and it's only above Red Cross by like. Uh, in fact, it may not even be. I, I it's hard to tell. Supergrass, in it for the money. The second Supergrass album, oh man. Everybody prefers the first album that I already mentioned in a past episode, Ashikoko. For me, it's this one. This is absolutely just a perfect, perfect record. And, you know, it's a really great guitar pop album. It does kind of have that that 90s guitar sound. I mean, because everything, everything did. did. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, escaping that on a guitar record in the 90s would be like escaping yes in the 80s in the 80s you're not gonna get away from it (laughs) you know it's just it's just there it's just part of it you know ubiquitous but this is such a strong strong album I mean I put it above Red Cross case closed there you go that's saying something that does say something actually yeah but yeah so there you go that is my list um I think we might have commercials. Yeah. We do. Next phase, next stage, next grade, next way. Hold it down, feel the light. Let it know it's a vibe. Pick it up, it's a lie. Move over, yeah, don't do it over. Cause it's over, yeah, yeah, yeah. A generation next. Next phase, next stage, next grade, next way. When your Motorola pager goes off, don't be so quick to check it. Relax. With the Motorola pager, you're in control. It never controls you. How to wear your Motorola pager? There are no rules. No rules. And remember, some Motorola pages are just more important than others. 
classlessness. So you got the rule, get a new Motorola pager. And no, now, Motorola. What you never thought possible. <laughs> All right, we are back. We are back. <laughs> oh, we're gonna hate Haterade. 97, but nobody's gonna hate 97 more than Tommy. Oh. <laughs> There's just not enough time left in the day for me to. There isn't because it's kind of literally hate it. because it's dark. literally it's for me not. To yeah. Properly hate 1997, but I'm gonna give you a dishonorable mention, and I'm gonna give you a worst of the year. Okay. Okay. All, all right. right. All right. Dishonorable month. mention. Limp Biscuit with three dollar bill, y'all. Oh. Yeah. yeah, we're yeah, that's here a now. Slow. We're oh. here now. That's where we are now at. Oh, we've entered that now. Mm. Okay. Oh shit. And my actual worst of the year, Creed with my own prison. Oh. Creed. And scene. Oh yeah. Mm. You know. Incredibly, <laughs> neither of those are on my list. There's just too much to choose from. That yeah, exactly. That's how much shit there is. That that yep. those fell through the cracks on my worst of. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty large objects. At. Pretty large objects to fall through yeah. cracks, man. Yeah. So, but Crystal, All let's right. see what's on your list. Tell us, tell us. My list of things I hate. Uh-huh. Sugar Ray. Oh, oh no. Oh. <laughs> oh. God, I forgot them. <laughs> Love Sorry, the Tommy. <laughs> the Dropkick Murphys. Oh. oh. Another one of these fucking ska, whatever the fuck oh. they're doing. It's, Irish, whatever it is. It's called Suck. That's the Terrible, genre. terrible. Primus. Oh. oh. Primus. Uh, here's a twofer. The Dandy Warhols and the Brian Jones Massacre. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, those are two different bands, are they? Yeah. <laughs> Hard to believe, right? There's a really good documentary on the Brian Jones Massacre. You ever see that? Yeah. You ever seen I haven't it? seen it, but I'm aware of it. Yeah, it's really, really good because I just stumbled upon it one night when I was house-sitting for somebody who had cable and um, or Netflix or whatever the fuck it was. And I knew nothing about these bands, really, except that I hated them. But it was a very interesting look. Well, in the end, that's all one really needs to that's know right. about them. <laughs> yes. yeah. let, your, let your hate guide you I through. I just thank you. <laughs> and my strength. 98 Degrees. Oh, oh, God. Talk about something I haven't thought of since then. Backstreet Boys. No. Oh. I wonder if she's going to add O-Town. No. <laughs> O-Town. Yeah, that might have right. been 1998. I don't know. Uh, no, not O-Town. Yeah. Um, Jesus Jones. Oh. Oh. Ooh. And um, when I was born for the seventh time by Corner Shop. Oh, you have it's right. I don't you don't have even know. special hate hatred for them. I really hate them. I really hate Corner Shop. Yeah, I kind of have no dogs in that race. Room full of Asha. Shut up. And then, last but not least, is Tub Thumper by Chumbo. Oh, <laughs> oh, the album. Oh, 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 the album. The album. Oh. Not just the single. The album. Which is like their. Th- 13th album or something. Yeah, right? in yeah. like five years. Yeah. Right? Insanity. Oh. Insanity. Wow. But a note about 98 Degrees. So they are a prime example of, and this happens all the time in every genre, oh, this is what's happening now? We Hurry up, get it together, and shove it out there. Yes. Oh, like 98 Degrees is so bad, not only could they not sing, but they weren't even attractive. <laughs> Like a lot of, I don't know if you remember this, but when they came out behind Backstreet Boys and whatever, and they were being foisted on us, the song was, the lead song, the hit song, sucked ass so bad. And I remember watching MTV, and it was at one of their shows in summertime, they were outdoors or some crap, and, you know, Kennedy or whoever (laughs) was interviewing these little girls, and she was like, oh, what do you like about 98 Degrees? And I will never, ever forget this. This one girl goes, well, I like the song, but they're not cute. Ouch. Done. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, Real longevity. Yow. Oh. That's it. That's flushing the toilet on you. Damn. When your, your audience member says, they're not cute. Yikes. Now, I want you to pause this and then go look at a picture of them. I'm wanting to do that right now. I don't, you know. The girl's not wrong. Okay. She's okay. not wrong. 
But yeah, 98 degrees. Is that your worst of the year? No, no, no. The worst was Chumbawamba. Oh, right. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Hated it. Paul? Well, all right. Give it well. to us, doctor. <laughs> I'm going to give it to the baby. All right. Give it to the baby. Ooh. All right. I have four... Run, uh, uh, dishonorable mentions and a worst of the year. Uh, my shit is out of order here, so I have to decide what the worst is. <laughs> uh oh, is that um, hard? How does one choose? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. This with this list. With this list. Um. Okay. All right. Well, let me just kind of just do it. Work this do out it. as I go. Well, okay. The first one I'm going to mention is a, a record that I should have put on last year's list. That I just that some some records I kind of throw on this list and they go go in the year that in my brain I see, I remember them being in and I make the mistake of not checking up on things sometimes. Yeah. I unfortunately have far too much trust in my own sort of like <laughs> memory. And and I find that I I think back in the day I think when I was younger I wouldn't make these mistakes. I think now that I'm older and I, I think I'm starting to go you know and I'm and I'm making really dumb mistakes yes. that like kind of horrify me. Yeah. Well anyway. Just Us by the Monkeys. Should have been on the 96 list, but yeah, I have it on this one. Because uh, yeah, like I said, a fucking it came out in October. You, we've talked about this. You've listened mm-hmm. to this. Yeah, I know. So you, you I know you have special disdain for that record. It's a very, that is a bad Monkeys record. And yeah, especially I, for Mike to come back, and everybody was very excited about that. I was coming I couldn't uh, wait. I was about coming this. coming out of my skin. What? All yes, four of them back. playing themsel- themselves, themselves. Like headquarters style, yes. like writing. That's what I thought was gonna happen. And like, and it didn't wow! Happen. And all it was was them just trying to like get on the grunge bandwagon. Yeah, like, oh, come on, this monkeys! Is awful. Come on, <sighs> really? That's okay. Sad. And it opens up with a really bad cover of Circle Sky. Yes. Terrible cover. Of Which Circle Sky. I almost threw it out the window after I heard that. Like, <laughs> what are you doing, Nez? You're ruining your own song. Come on. Okay. All right. Mm. Well. Motley Crue, Generation Swine. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh I man. forgot about that. <laughs> you notice I haven't been bothering put, to put, I haven't even bothered to put like Girls, Girls, Girls or, or Theater Pain on my worst dubs for those years. Generation Swine? Yeah. Eh. Generation Go that fuck yourself. Swine. I was, I'm, lucky you had your glasses Ow. on. <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah, fuck that shit. Mm. And, uh, well. Mm-hmm. Kiss with Carnival of Souls, Souls. their fucking grunge album. (laughs) Oh, my God. You have listened to this, I'm sure. Of course you have. Yeah, Carnival of Souls, the final sessions. I listened to it. It's the last gasp of the Revenge lineup. Yes. They were going to do until they did the reunion. They had this album in the can, and then the chance to become gazillionaires with Ace and Peter coming back fell in their lap and they went we're not putting this fucking record out no. and uh, they went and did that but what's funny is that they did kind of sneak it out it didn't come out when it was supposed to or in the way it was supposed to right but after they reunited with Ace and Peter they just kind of tossed it go. out they just kind of tossed it out there yeah, yeah. no, with no, no ceremony nothing nothing yeah. a lot of people were surprised and yeah. record stores are like what a new Kiss record well and I it was so, it was said Kiss Carnival of Souls the final session yes. yeah. so I, and when that came out and I saw that I thought oh shit did everything go south of Ace and Peter and they just said fuck it Kiss is over <laughs> right that's what I thought when I saw that I thought oh, Kiss is over oh here's no. that album we didn't put out final sessions of that rec- that, that yeah. lineup yeah but it's a, sh- it's a shitty album it's a terrible record and you know you you read comments from KISS fans, all the, the KISS can do no wrong people online. People call it the grunge job. That is not a grunge job. Yeah. Yes, it fucking it's is. It's them trying that is a to fucking sound straight up grunge current. Album. It's yeah. them trying to sound current. It is so fucking clearly Dude. a grunge job. It's not a grunge job. You just don't want it to be a grunge yeah. album because it's KISS. All you, and you don't probably don't like grunge. You are well aware, and you have said this yourself, a lot of KISS fans are fucking delusional. And well, Illusion. and collectively, they're they, collectively they're only rubbing two brain cells together. There's that. Yeah, I say that as a Kiss fan. <laughs> Same here. I, yeah. Same I, here. I, 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 <laughs> I co-sign as a big. My Kiss cousin fan. was the drummer in Kiss, and still I could say this. <laughs> Okay, you're gonna have to clarify this. Oh, are you you didn't know about that? No, you you have just dropped a bomb. Continue. Go go, oh, go with Oh, that. Eric go. Carr. Oh, he's your cousin. Yes, Wait, I. Okay, wait, okay. I never told you about that? No. I, th- I think so, but I'm still feeling like I'm hearing it for the first time. Yes. I didn't know it's, this. It's sort of familiar, but for some reason I think I forgot. Yeah, on my dad's side. What? 
All right, Kiss fans. Eric Carr's cousin right here. Yeah. First cousins. Uh, he would have been my dad's cousin, so that makes second, second cousins, cousin. right? Oh, shit. Okay. Yes. Freak out. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's the Italian part of your family, yes. then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. What's his real last name? Caravello. Yes. Paul Paul Caravello. Paul Caravello. And there's a song. There's a song. This has had something to do with anything, but I've never been able to speak about this out loud to another person before. There was this old hit. You know, Paul Caravello. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I was thinking, Paul Caravello. Oh, Every yeah, time I work. fucking hear that. Yeah. Paul Caravello. Yeah, that's his real name, yeah. But yeah, yeah, all right, all right. So there I we never, go. I never got to meet him. Uh, he was obviously quite a bit older because he was actually my dad's cousin. And I did not even know. I wasn't even into Kiss, and he had already passed away. At that time. Yeah. yeah. So oh, I well, never that got was to meet him before you were he died. Young. Yeah. 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 So, wow. But yeah, and I didn't find out until several years later after he passed away. I was over at my uncle Nicky's house, and he was telling me, he's like, oh, yeah, 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 you know, Paul is blah, 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 you know, he's drummer. I'm like, wait, what? And, like, he just dropped this <laughs> on me. Like, I'm like, huh? He, he dropped it on you the way you just dropped no, it on dropped us. it on me, and, and I was like, you need to tell me more. <laughs> yes. I had no idea. Yeah, I never got wow, to meet him. Wow, freak yeah. out. Wow, yeah. okay, well, there you go. So all you kids fans who want to come at us for hating Carnival Souls. Yep, I can say what I want. Come on. Yes, <laughs> we have some Eric Carr blood running through this guy's yep. veins right here. Wow. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Anyway, I'm not even done with my list yet. There's just so much. I have just so much hate for that fucking Kiss album. Um, especially so because those guys... Um, I have to go on about it a little bit more. Especially because those guys talked so much shit throughout the 90s. In every fucking interview in the 90s, Gene would talk shit about all those bands mm -hmm. that, they're, that, they're ripping, that they're imitating on this. And, uh, and the whole vibe and all the negative vibe, all these bands, blah, 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 all the negativity all and they're unhappy. And if you don't want to make any money, well, 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 you can write a check and send it to Gene Simmons, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And then the first thing he does is turn around after dissing all these bands in every interview, uh -huh. every single one, and tries to make that fucking yep. album. Hypocrite much, Gene? <sighs> Man, all right. Nothing's all right. Uh, we can do. So, <laughs> that brings us to, uh, okay. In sync with in sync. Mm. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye bye. Was that your number one? No, no, my number one. Tub thumping yeah. by Chuck oh. Zumba. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Terrible. If there's anything worse than Carnival of Souls by Kiss, that would be it. That would be it. Ooh wee. <laughs> Thirteen. So yeah, there you go. What the fuck? Who's All right. their records. Yeah, it's, it's <sighs> terrible. Um, oh, so while you're contemplating that, all of all that we just learned, <laughs> mm. Mm. maybe watch a couple of commercials. All right, or only one, only one. cheesy Mexican pizza for just 99 cents when you buy a large drink. Taco Bell. Want some? All right. All right. All right. Good Lord. All right. All right. Well, this is it. This is it. This mm. is the end of this episode. But before we go. No, it's vintage, vintage photo, photo time. time. All right. So here's Crystal in 1997 with Jay Leno backstage at The Tonight Show. She says my cousin, Kevin Eubanks, had taken over for Branford Marcellus as the MD slash band leader on the show two years earlier. I was on a vacation in LA and Kevin took me to the lot on a tour of the studio and to meet Jay. People usually talk smack about him, and unjustly so. Jay is a truly genuine, regular guy who is a workaholic, is very friendly and nice, really salt of the earth thanks to his parents, and he's one of the funniest comedians I've ever seen on a stage. Now, one, yes, I'm taller than he is. Two, notice how tightly he's hugging me. And this is me in 1997 with my friend Sean there in the middle. I've talked about him in a lot of episodes. He's, he's the guy who got me into a lot of the stuff I was into in the 90s. And on Far Right, that is my best friend Brent. I've also talked about him on quite a lot of these episodes. And this is a Polaroid of us at our friends Jose and Beth's wedding. And here's Tommy in 1997. He says, here is my very first step into music. I got inspired by listening to the first two Ozzy Osbourne solo albums over and over again. And I looked into the classified ads one day and found someone selling a guitar, a bass, and an amp for maybe 60 bucks. I talked her down to 50. The bass was the only usable one of the three, so I became a bassist. That would be my cousin Frankie on the left and Pablo from Votech, Automatic Trade School, on the right. 
Pablo had actually played in a real band in Guatemala that made two CDs. He was basically a rock star as far as I was concerned. I roped him and Frankie into a couple of horrendous jam sessions in Frankie's living room before Pablo got tired of the extreme amateur hour and bailed. Alright, so that is Crystal and me and Tommy in 1997. Okay. All right, yeah, all right. There we are in 1997, and well, yeah. whatever. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you everybody for watching these videos, and thank you for especially people who are still watching right now. If you've gotten this far, then you yeah, are the yeah. champion, my friend. Come along, all way, right. baby. And uh, but maybe subscribe if you haven't. If you have, we, we 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 thank you. But if you haven't, subscribe. But if you do, click the little bell. Notifications. And uh, if you do that, you're going to get a notification that's going to tell you that next week we're going to be back to discuss our favorite albums of 1998. Uh, two more years left. Two more years left. <laughs> what, yeah, what did you think it gets coming, better so after that? Two more years left. Do not, do not breathe easy because the zero zeros are on the horizon. <laughs> the odds are coming. They're waiting for us. <laughs> yeah. It's a trap, I'm telling you. Ooh, we're going to yeah. be wishing for the 90s. Yeah, it's going to well, trap, that's the teens. Uh, oh, yeah. That's, that's the teens. Question. Tommy, you, answer, Crystal. Your your uh, music, I not will not stand behind. Yada yada yada. Yes. Does that go all the way through to it the? It goes to two thousand two, two thousand three, okay. and then it stops. Oh, all right. And then you just have to deal what's there. With yep. What's there. And then I've got what I've got, and that's it. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Well, anyway, we will see you guys next week, nineteen ninety eight. Bye. All right. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We have a we have a we have a fun color thing happening here. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about Christmas. Yeah, I just got this cool new shirt, dude. Oh, Marquee Moon. Right. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. right. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Three, two, one. Well, all, all right. right.